Oh. Welcome to the regular session of the for January for February of the Opelika Planning Commission. Uh, first of all, we need commissioners. We need a, a motion on the uh, minutes for January. So moved. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> Any abstentions? Motion carries. Uh, Matt, do you have any updates on the previous uh, commission meetings? Just that, uh, as I said, the uh, <clears throat> rezoning that was approved or recommended by the Planning Commission in December was uh, approved by the City Council, the Village of Waterford Place. Uh, there are two other rezonings that will have their second and final reading on uh, March 2nd. That's uh, the extension of uh, Douglas Street and Fox Run, and the uh, rezoning of Center Hill, uh, which is off of uh, Gateway Drive, or excuse me, off of Frederick Road. Okay, thank you. Today's agenda items call for a public hearing. If you have anything that you'd like to say or have a comment about, please come to the podium to my left and state your name and address. Thank you. Matt, let's go ahead and get started on item one. Yes, sir. The uh, first item on your agenda today is a, a re, or excuse me, a preliminary and final plat approval uh, for Opelika Marketplace subdivision. This is a, uh, again, like I said, we don't usually see these <clears throat> preliminary and final plats together often, but <clears throat> this was one that you had approved uh, about a year and a couple months ago. Uh, as a four lot subdivision, I, th I think they're revising two of the lots. Uh, it's in the 1700 block of Frederick Road. This is kind of behind America's uh, thrift store and Lowe's uh, near the Microtel. The applicant is uh, Vic Patel with AU Hospitality. Uh, currently the property is undeveloped and is zoned C3 with a gateway primary zoning on it. Uh, again, the applicant is re re requesting a uh, two lot subdivision. This is to create uh, lots 5A3B1 and 5A3B2. So this is 5A3B1 uh, right here. This will have uh, what was previously approved as an element hotel. Uh, is my understanding will still go on this piece. And then the remaining piece, 53B, 53, uh, or 5A3B2, which is about 10 acres, will be kind of left for future development. The lots meet the minimum requirements in the gateway primary overlay. Uh, and we do recommend preliminary and final plat approval. Uh, engineering reports that all of these, uh, all of the comments have been addressed and uh, they have recommended preliminary and final plat approval. Water service is accessible to this subdivision from a water main in uh, next to Lowe's here. And then the subdivision is in Opelika Power Services territory. Uh, Mr. Ledge Nettles is, I believe, here representing the applicant. If you have any questions for him. This item is open to, for a public hearing. Do we have anyone that would like to speak? Public hearing is now closed. Commissioner, made a motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Item two. Item two is a preliminary plat approval. This is located in unincorporated Lee County in Opelika's planning jurisdiction. The, uh, the subdivision is called Flatstone Estates Subdivision Phase Two. Uh, this is a request for preliminary approval on Lee Road 2161. The applicant is again Ledge Nettles with baseline surveying, representing Fenderson LLC, uh, Keith Hint Henderson. Uh, currently the property is undeveloped. <clears throat> There is a previous phase uh, that you see here to the, the east of this uh, current phase that's being proposed. Uh, this would continue that development. Uh, this is 11 lots. It's about 2.23 miles from the Opelika city limits. And so again, it is in our three mile planning jurisdiction. Uh, these are proposed to be single family lots on septic systems ranging in size. Uh, most of these lots are uh, just over an acre to an acre and a quarter. 
and then you see uh, a larger lot on the cul-de-sac and then a uh, lot, uh, I believe that's lot 68, which is uh, quite large and would have access to this future road and to the cul-de-sac as well. It's approximately 23.77 acres. Uh, the plat meets minimum lot requirements for a subdivision in the planning jurisdiction. Again, we did have some notes on the, uh, for recommendation for approval. Uh, these, we have received an updated plat that does show uh, these have, having been corrected. So we are recommending uh, preliminary approval. The engineering department notes that they, the developer will be required to submit a infrastructure construction and grading plan for the drainage, utility, and post-construction detention. Uh, and roadway installation to Lee County Highway and Develop Department and to the Engineering and Public Works Departments for review and approval. Uh, once uh, these have been approved and all other utility approvals have been met, uh, we'll issue a land disturbance uh, permit. Um, this will be monitored by the Engineering Department and Utilities for uh, completion and, and testing. Once those have been completed and the bond is provided for maintenance, the uh, plat can be submitted to the Planning Commission for uh, consideration of final plat. Uh, engineering Department recommends preliminary approval of this subdivision. Uh, the Opelika Utilities Board reports that this is in the Beauregard Water Utility or Water Authority Service Area and Opelika Power Services notes that this is outside their, their territory. Again, Mr. Nettles is here if you have any uh, particular questions on this subdivision as well. This item is open for a public hearing. Do we have anyone that would like to speak? Public hearing is now closed. Commissioners. Second. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> Matt, even when this is um, within our planning jurisdiction, which this is, do we still require the underground utilities and the sidewalk on at least one side of the street? Uh, I, I'm not exactly certain, sir. Uh, that, that's in our public works, uh, or I, actually that's a preference the Planning Commission has had before. I, I believe that the ones in Sentinel Hill uh, were uh, required to have sidewalks. I'm not sure if they had underground utilities. They do, too, yeah. they, they do have underground utilities, so. Well, I, I, I'm not sure if this previous phase uh, has uh, Sidewalks or or if they're overground or under, underground utilities there. I, I think it should be a, I think it should be a requirement, and it very well could be at some point, 20, 30, 50 years from now, these folks will want to annex into the city, and um, it certainly ought to be in keeping with what we've done with our subdivisions. Yes, sir. If, if you like the uh, the commission can add that as a condition of approval. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Excuse me. Was that with a, uh, a condition adding underground utilities and sidewalks? I would, I would appreciate if that would be added to the motion. Uh, that's fine. So, Mr. Minifee, you're, you're amending your motion? Who seconded it? And it was second. Yeah. Okay. And everybody that voted in favor is still in favor, right? Okay. Motion carries. Item three. <clears throat> Item three is uh, a subdivision that you've seen before as well. This is slightly modified though. This is the park subdivision. It is located, or they're requesting preliminary approval. Uh, the property is located at McCoy Street and East Johnson Avenue. Uh, so uh, I think you're familiar with this. Property uh, originally came in as a uh, 70 lot uh, subdivision. This time it's coming back in, or 74 lot subdivision. This time they're requesting 78 lots and it's, it's slightly modified. Uh, and I'll show you kind of what it looks like. The property is, is currently zoned C2 with a gateway corridor secondary uh, uh, overlay on it. So here you see the, the layout of the uh, current, current development, uh, kind of one long street with a cul-de-sac here. 
Uh, originally, there was a connection that uh, extended up to East Johnson and then out to Columbus Parkway. Uh, this was not shown in this, this request. We have since talked to the uh, uh, developers, uh, at, or the, the authorized representative, which in this case is uh, Barrett Simpson uh, for Pyramid Financial Trust, and have uh, added a recommendation in here that this be uh, connected back so that there is a connection back to East Johnson Avenue. Uh, but what you'll see here is a, a 78 lot subdivision. There are 74 residential lots, uh, two parcels right at the very front on McCoy that uh, they are proposing to leave for commercial uses, and that is uh, not defined, but they would have to meet uh, a commercial use within the GCS uh, C2 zoning, unless it were rezoned. And then you have two HOA parcels, uh, one here at the very back in the cul-de-sac, and then one uh, kind of shown here at lot 75. Uh, you'll note that most of these lots uh, are approximately uh, 8,000 to 14,000 square feet. They're, they're mostly kind of 8,000, meeting the minimum lot size for the C2, which defaults back to an R5 zoning. Uh, the commercial lots, of course, are bigger, as you would expect with commercial lots. Uh, they do note, uh, Again, some, some amenity areas, but don't show what type of uses would go on there, uh, whether that would be uh, some, some, something passive or something different. Uh, as I said again, we do recommend approval of this, subject to the uh, connection uh, being made back again to East Johnson. Uh, and so that is our recommendation for preliminary flight approval to include the following, installing underground utilities and sidewalk on at least one side of the street, provide a right-of-way access uh, from the development to East Johnson so that it is, uh, connects back, or from the development to East Johnson. Uh, add a note to the plot concerning the HOA and who will maintain the ownership of those HOA parcels. And then add a note to uh, that the minimum building setbacks for the residential lots must follow the minimum setbacks for R5 zoning. Again, the engineering department has uh, made a recommendation that this connect to East Johnson uh, through lot 75, and then they have uh, put in their standard uh, comments re regarding approval of construction plans, uh, construction, engineering, grading, and then that they be approved and, or excuse me, the plans be approved, that the construction be monitored, tested, and once completed, they can submit uh, bonds and uh, come back for final plat approval. With that, they recommend preliminary and final plat approval for the application. Uh, the utilities board notes that this is, uh, that water is available through the right of way in McCoy Street. And Opelika Power Service notes that this is inside their Opelika Power Service territory. And Mr. Um, Rice is here to represent the applicant. Okay, thank you. Public hearing is now open on this item. Is there anyone that would like to speak? Public hearing is now closed. Commissioner. I move for the preliminary plat approval with staff recommendations. Any discussion? Yes. <clears throat> How did you get to lot 75? So uh, lot 75 again is uh, it's access from East Johnson Avenue right now. Uh, I think lot 75 will be fairly well revised because we're, we're requesting and if the uh, amendment or if the, the motion that is made is approved, they will basically come back in and put uh, a road kind of through lot 17 up through 75 to East Johnson Avenue here. Does that change the amount of square footage of lot 17? Uh, most likely they will, the, the previous plan showed some lots fronting onto this new street that would be connecting there. And so they basically would uh, revise, lot 17 would likely become unbuildable in its current configuration and it would be reconfigured to see if they could maintain the same number of lots or if they would, they could potentially lose a buildable lot through this. Okay, it just won't be less than 8,000. No, ma'am, it, it can't be anything less than uh, 7,500 square feet at all because of the zoning requirements. Uh, but 
I, I think they'll keep it consistent with that, that zoning requirement. Can a fire truck turn around on this road? Uh, yes, ma'am. So uh, there are cul-de-sacs at the end which will meet our fire truck requirements, and then you'll have uh, the uh, road that will connect. East Johnson is, is in place. It needs some improvements. Uh, but you'll have this road that will connect up here uh, to that existing right away. And the HOA lots at the end? Yes, ma'am. Are ma they just uh, playground lots or? A I, I would have to defer to the applicant on that. They, they haven't given us any uh, indication what those will be, whether it'll be a fire pit or playground or, or something like that. Um, as far as the the number of lots, we have Go been ahead. looking. Mike on. It is. Yes, sir. Can you pull it up just a little Blake. bit? Sorry. Blake, introduce yourself. Oh yes, sir. Blake Rice, Barrett Simpson. As far as the number of lots go, Miss um, Cannon, the we've already started messing around with reconfiguring and creating an intersection there to connect to East Johnson. Probably going to lose one, maybe two total lots in that area and in the subdivision as a whole to make that connection. But all the lots will still be well above stand, uh, minimum standards. Um, the HOA lots, uh, unknown at this time. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of options that go into um, common area on, as far as HOA common areas go these days. And at this point in time with a preliminary plat, we really don't know. I don't foresee anything like a pool in this subdivision. I would think this would be more passive recreation, maybe a park, um, benches, small playgrounds, things like that. But I can't be certain at this time. So this is just preliminary only? Yes, ma'am. We haven't even started construction drawings yet. Okay, you're just testing us to see it. <clears throat> this is the first step. Got to get, got to okay. get the initial approval. Okay. Um, should this become approved, construction drawings probably would not be submitted until sometime late summer. All, all the lots are single family. Yes, sir. Thank you, Blake. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Item four. Item four is, uh, is has two parts. It's uh, kind of the same use, though, and it's same applicant. So this is a request by uh, First Baptist Church of Opelika. They're requesting a uh, approval of two missionary homes uh, on existing homes within the uh, within their existing properties. Uh, the first is 907 Avenue B, and then the second is uh, 314 South 9th Street. Uh, they are both in the C2 zone, uh, and adjacent to existing uh, First Baptist uh, Church of Opelika property, or part of First Baptist Opelika Church property. Uh, so uh, the applicant here is, is Mr. Uh, Walter C. Dorsey representing the church. Uh, the, the current buildings are vacant. They are uh, older, historic, single-family homes. As I said, C2, uh, zone C2, just out of, outside of downtown on the south side. They're requesting conditional use approval for a temporary missionary housing uh, for these uh, sites. Uh, the, the residents of these two homes would be uh, students attending Auburn University campus, uh, the church would provide them free room board. Students would be responsible for, my understanding, their own, uh, any, any other uh, fees. Uh, <clears throat> so at uh, 907 Avenue B, you have what's called the Wilkes House, as, as many of you are familiar. Uh, it's previously been a law office, and then uh, the church's college min ministry, and that's this house here. Uh, if you want to kind of look at it, uh, let's see. Actually, this is the house, uh, the Wilkes house here, the yellow house, kind of sitting in the parking lot for the church. And so here is uh, just kind of an aerial photo of, of what it looks like. Uh, this site would support, uh, let's see, I, I apologize. 
Uh, this, this site would have, uh, I believe, four males living in the home. Uh, the, the house is approximately 1,400 square feet. The lot is approximately 7,400 square feet. Uh, as I said, the, the young men would attend Auburn University, uh, but live here in the house. Uh, there's ample parking around the house that is owned by the church and who owns the property as well. And they're not expecting to make any major modifications to the exterior of the house. Uh, with that, we do recommend approval. The other home, which is uh, 314 South 9th Street. So here you see a, a photo of what the house looks like and kind of a uh, aerial photo again of, of the location of the house on the corner of Avenue C and, and 9th Street. Uh, this house would be uh, requesting the same use approval except for it would house up to eight unrelated women. Uh, the house itself is 2,840 square feet on a 20,000 square foot lot, so much larger house, about twice the size. Uh, and it'd be about 400 feet away from the, the other house we talked about. Uh, again, it would provide the women a uh, free room and board where they would uh, have, while they're attending Auburn University. Uh, <clears throat> because of these, uh, uh, the existing use of, of historic properties, the ample parking, and the location next to the church, we're recommending uh, approval of the conditional use for both. The engineering department stated that they have no uh, concerns with the proposal and recommends conditional use. Opelika Utilities presently serve both properties and Opelika Power Services uh, did not have a report. But I believe they are in the service territory. Yeah. Uh, with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have uh, or uh, Mr. Dorsey is here representing the, uh, the church as well. This item is open for a public hearing. Do we have anyone that would like to speak? Public hearing is now closed. Commissioners, need a motion. Second. Any discussion? Yes. Our rules for having um, unrelated people living together what are, what are our rules for that? So we do have rules, uh, as you, you mentioned, uh, that, are, that limit uh, to uh, families in certain zones. Uh, those are typically in the R1, R1A, R2, and I believe R3 zones. Uh, in this case, the C2 zone does not have that same restriction, so it allows uh, more than uh, the family plus two unrelated people. So, and in this case, you, this would not be considered a single-family home. In, in this instance, it would truthfully be considered more of a dormitory as an accessory use to the church. Do we have rules for a dormitory? No, ma'am. Not specific. Uh, it's, uh, like I said, it, it is a, a somewhat common use that goes along sometimes with churches like uh, schools and daycares and things like that. They, they provide... Uh, minimal housing for either missionaries or uh, staff on site and so it's, it's kind of one of those uses that there are no set standard uh, guidelines that we have they would have to meet building code they would have to meet uh, parking requirements but other than that uh, it would be up to the discretion of the commission whether they added any other stipulations as far as uh, specific rules you felt necessary that's my understanding, yes. Does it require any licensing? No, sir, we don't have any specific license. This would not be considered what we call a group home, where they're in there for a specific use or purpose or receiving treatment in some regard. Uh, this would be more of a, as I said, a, a staff housing or dormitory type housing, guest house, guest house somewhat. Uh, so it is, it is definitely different than, than that style use. I think we need to have a rule for dormitories. Un unrelated, no more than so many unrelated. I don't have any problem with this one right here, but I can see a door being opened here. But, and that's why uh, it is a conditional use. So if, if they did come in and ask to put 20 people in, in this house, we could, we could look at that. 
I, I can check it if you'd like. I can, we can put together some recommendations for rules that would go along with this yeah. style yeah. of housing. Yeah. And what about the house down the street and then the one down there that's ne not necessarily owned by the Baptist Church? Yes, ma'am. But I, I can just see problems coming. I understand. I, I, can, I can put together some information on this and okay. bring back some uh, particular rules unless you want me to do that prior to this approval. No, I don't have any problem with this. I, I just yes, want us to be aware. Okay. I'll get you some, some, some typical rules that would be associated with this type of use and, and kind of let you look at that and see if we'd like to put those in our zoning ordinance as okay. set, set kind of rules or limitations on, on space. The only problem I have with that, though, is if, if you don't have rules for the first one, put them in later, that becomes the argument, well, you didn't have them before. Why am I subject to them now? Yes, sir. Typically, I'm concerned not to have them before we get adventure into this. Well, and, and that's, that's not uncommon. Uh, when you get a, a different use or a new use, a lot of times you don't have rules for it. And when you start to see that either questions that that use brings up, you can add, add them back in or, or you can uh, if you start to see the use being replicated in, in multiple places, then we would definitely look at whether or not we need standards and rules. Uh, you know, one question would be, would you approve this use if it were not attached to the church property, if it were in a residential neighborhood or something like that? And I think from a staff perspective, we would look at that completely different than where this is. This has long been property owned by, by the church. And we can come back and Yes, sir. I, I mean, j just because you don't have rules in place now doesn't mean you can't go through a uh, process, review rules potentially for this uh, use later. Now, if, if they're approved now, they, they wouldn't be subject to those rules at this time. If they came back and amended it later, they would fall under those. But uh, I think you would want to know kind of what, what your... We, we would want to know, make sure what you're concerned about from a, a standpoint of, you know, what, what negative issues this use may, may create. And I think, I, I think definitely the space for, for rooms is one. I mean, how many people you have per, per bedroom. And in this case, I think each of these has uh, two people in each bedroom, which is not uncommon for this type of use. I don't think you're, you're going to have something where you've got four or five people living in a a small bedroom or on bunk beds. Uh, okay, I'm not concerned because it's a church uh, sanction. But are you saying that these, if you came back to put rules in, this this resident would then be grandfathered? Yes, sir. That is uh, in the future. In the future, until they ask for a modification, or they stopped using it for that use, and if they came back later and asked for it again, in that instance they would have to come back under whatever rules are in place at that time. Matt, do you foresee anything that you know about what rules that they would not fall under? Uh, no, I mean, I, I think the, the typical rules that you have in place for this is, is, is there enough parking? Uh, who's, who's requesting it and what kind of, what kind of hours that may be associated with it? Is it something that's going to be disruptive to the, the neighborhood or the community around it? Do you need additional buffering, which in this case I don't think is an issue? Uh, you could put a maximum number of people per household, or you could put a, a ratio of how many people per bedroom or how many people per square foot that you, you have in a home. Uh, and I, I do admit, I mean, this is, this is not something that comes up every day. I don't know that I've had, in, in all the churches I've, I've ever approved, I've, I've only had one other church mention having something similar to this, and they, they never went through with it. So it's not something that most churches, I think, would do other than a simple parsonage. Uh, this, this is definitely a little different than that. But it's my understanding, I think at least one of these houses has had some missionary families uh, live in it before. Uh, Matt, can we order that? That is a group home, yes, ma'am. Uh, so the, and I, I can't believe the, can't can't remember the name of it, but there is a group home home just across the the corner from this. 
I think the idea that these students will go to Auburn and potentially are going to go to seminary, mm -hmm. uh, and so it gives them an opportunity to get one year of credit that the seminary will accept. The church is going to help them by providing them free place to live, which you know accounts to a good deal of uh, part of their education. And so these students will just they'll rotate on an annual basis. Uh, I think is the way they're looking at this. They're not going to be there for that student will be there for a long term. He will come do his one year at Auburn and then probably go to seminary or go to church work or wherever he's going to go. So we're just looking to aid them in lowering their cost of education and helping them get further into their ministry. Yes, sir. It does say that they would only be there for one year at a time. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Let's go to item five. Yes, sir. Item five is a request for a, a conditional use. This is an expansion of an existing uh, self-storage uh, business. Uh, the subject property is located at 1615 Thomason Drive. This is Sun Self Storage. Uh, it's currently in the C2 zone. Uh, the applicant is Stephen Benson. One thing that is a little different about this case is at one point this was in the, uh, I believe this was in the gateway. Because we've re removed the gateway and kind of pulled it back a bit, this is no longer in the gateway uh, because it, it doesn't meet within that distance. Uh, so the, the review is slightly different, but not, not much. Uh, the applicant is requesting to construct three mini warehouses uh, towards the back uh, eastern portion of this up near the right, railroad right of way here. Uh, the three buildings would hold uh, 36 non-climate control units. Uh, they are approximately totaling 5,700 square feet. This use was first approved in 2003 and there have been about four or five other expansions of the use. Expansions, uh, include climate control, I believe, at the very back. Uh, the 36 uh, units would require four additional paved parking spaces, which should be able to be accommodated uh, adjacent to the buildings. Uh, it's typically not an issue for parking with these types of uses. Uh, we did note that the uh, location of the buildings, and here's kind of a, a quick drawing. So you see kind of a, the larger view here at the top. And so the buildings are back here in bold. Uh, and then you have a kind of zoom in on those individual buildings. So you see they're 20 by 60, 30 by 70, and 30 by, I believe that's 80. Uh, and with 20 foot aisles in between them. Um, and so there would be ample place to park. Uh, we also looked at the landscaping to see whether or not any additional landscaping would be required. This specific use and where it's being located does not trip any uh, specific special buffers like a residential buffer or a parking lot buffer. So you're only looking at the general overall landscaping, which the site is not adding any area, not adding any additional uh, undeveloped area. This was kind of already being used for some outdoor uh, parking, I think. Also. If you look at this, you'll notice kind of down here in the corner, you'll see kind of some wavy lines. That's a, a stream through here. There's a fairly healthy section of existing trees that would, we think, more than meet any required uh, number of points there. We looked at the floor area ratio to make sure that it didn't exceed that, and it does only cover about 26 of the 26 percent of the total uh, square footage with the addition. And so, with that, we are recommending uh, staff approval. Uh, subject to them adding four paved parking spaces. Uh, engineering reports that there is no substantial drainage utility changes proposed with the application and the building inspections department will handle all uh, building and land disturbance permits. Uh, they have no comments or concerns and recommend conditional use. Opelika Utilities presently serve this use and the subdivision with, is within the Opelika Power Services territory. And Mr. Benson is here if you have any questions for him. This item is open for a public hearing. Do we have anyone that would like to speak? Public hearing is now closed.
commissioners. Need a motion. I, I move for conditional use approval. Staff recommendations. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. To item six. Item six is a conditional use request as well. This is for an automobile repaint, or repair, paint, and body shop at 3829 Pepper Parkway. Uh, the applicant is uh, C. Michael Richmond, representing Rusty Nix, who is the property owner. Uh, the property is currently zoned C3 in the Gateway Corridor. Uh, this has been quite a few things uh, over its lifetime. I think at one time it was a uh, psycho gas station. It has been a farmer's market for a while and then was a tire and uh, car wash for some period of time. The applicant now who is a current, uh, has current business in Auburn is, is looking to move his uh, body and repair shop over to this location. Um, and so here's, you see kind of uh, an aerial photo of what the building looks like. You've got the large canopy and then the, the main building behind it. Uh, kind of general location. And this is all provided by the applicant. They show uh, quite a few of the existing uh, auto care, auto body shops through the area. Uh, I apologize, this is a little hard to see, but zoom into that. This is uh, basically a proposed site plan and proposed uh, landscaping. All of this has been, uh, I believe, installed. Uh, so the applicant, as I said, is, is hoping to install a, a body and repair shop. They've been in business for 31 years and, and are looking for a new location. Uh, they don't do any mechanical repairs. Uh, that's all subcontracted subcontract, out, and they don't have a tow service uh, to pick up wreck storage or wrecked automobiles for storage. Uh, most of their claims are insurance settlements or insurance or, or insurance settlements. Uh, the uh, site plan here shows uh, kind of how they plan to use the property. So they would have customer parking, some employee parking, and extra parking. Uh, they have a holding area behind the building and would add a uh, fence uh, to this area so that it would screen all of the cars that are not in good shape from being visible here. Uh, they, as I said, most of the landscaping has been installed with previous uh, uses. We did make a recommendation that they install uh, some shrubbery along the front portion here. Uh, near the canopy to kind of help buffer some of that uh, and visually screen the, the vehicles from Pepper Parkway. Uh, the applicant, one of our questions was about kind of how things would, would look from Pepper Parkway and that's that's been an issue with a previous tenant there. Uh, they note that they would restrict all of their wrecked vehicles to the holding area which is required by our ordinance. Uh, they're proposing a chain link fence with uh, visual slats, which is allowed if it's behind the building, which in this case it is. Uh, they would not be allowed to, uh, they, they would schedule their vehicles so that there's not an overabundance of vehicles located on site. Uh, all the work would be performed inside the existing uh, 5,000 square foot uh, building. <clears throat> And here they know that their business is eight to five. They have two to four employees, uh, some other information there. And then once the repairs are made and the, the car is in uh, good condition, they would park it back outside here underneath the canopy uh, for pickup. Uh, we do have some special development standards that we added when we uh, changed the gateway corridor standards. Uh, and basically they are that any vehicles undergoing repair, body work, painting must re remain inside an enclosed structure at all times. Uh, unlicensed, untitled vehicles should not be permitted on the site. No body uh, chassis should be stored uh, outside on the site at any time. All parts, including body parts, shall be stored uh, within the completely enclosed structure. Adequate provisions should be made for ventilation, dispersion, and removal of fumes. Uh, associated with chemical hazards or fluids. Uh, typically that's with paint shop as well. Uh, there must be a separator within the drainage system for cleaning agents, 
if cleaning agents are being rinsed off or vehicles being washed or rinsed, there shall be no selling of vehicles at a shop for auto repair. Uh, the area around the building should be kept free of debris and shall be maintained in an orderly and clean condition. And no repair service or paint bay shall be oriented uh, so that its interior is visible from the corridor. They would have a paint booth which is visible uh, in this instance. However, that's an existing roll-up door uh, on the existing building. And so we made note of that. <clears throat> uh, we do recommend approval subject to the following that the, all wrecked vehicles uh, remain in the holding lot. Uh, and install an opaque fence for the holding parking area. The proposed height of the fence be at least six feet or higher and adequate so vehicles in the holding lot are not seen when viewed from outside the fence area. Uh, again, we note that they have proposed chain link fence with slats. Uh, plant eight shrubs on the west, west side of the front property line as shown on the landscape plan. Uh, plant a row of shrubs along the front property line near the concrete edge and canopy uh, three gallon minimum size. If the dumpster area is seen from Pepper Parkway dumpster including the, the enclosure and gate must be, uh, or the enclosure must be screened with an opaque fence at a height so the dumpster is not visible from outside. All auto repairs and painting must be performed inside the building, not outside. Rinsing and washing vehicles must be, will be provided by the business. Wastewater discharge on the ground is not allowed. An inlet must be installed at the location where vehicles are being washed and rinsed to collect wastewater and that be connected to sanitary sewer system so that water is treated and dis before discharge. And approval of that wastewater collection system must be required uh, from the applicable departments. The engineering department notes that because there are no uh, substantial changes, uh, building inspections will handle all the land disturbance and any building permits. Uh, they will not require a site plan. They recommend uh, conditional use. Oplac Utilities Board reports that this is in their uh, service area. And open like a power services notes that this is outside their service area. And I am uh, available to answer questions after motion, and I believe Mr. Richmond is here as well. This item is open for a public hearing. Do we have anyone that would like to speak? First of all, I've been in business uh, 36 years. Sir, 36 can you years. give your name and... Uh... Oh, my name is Mike Richmond. Okay. I'm a master's paint and body for 36 years. Um, we do quality repair, high-end cars. Nothing's visible. Um, not saying that everybody applies to that here in Auburn or Opelika, but our shop is clean. We have no waste. Everything's concealed. Everything's contained. All the work we've done in the buildings and if you look at the back parking where the red line is that, that's where we're going to put the privacy fence in the back where you can't see the car. I really there. can't understand the thing you're saying. Okay, let me take this off. Yeah. All right. Um, let me start over. If you'll speak where, up too, it's the microphone's red, just a little soft. Where the red line's at. Yes, sir. That's where we're going to put the privacy fence partitioning off from the edge of the building to the far side of the property next door. We actually have 18 stalls back there. Nine of them you can't see from the road. We also have a container back there. It's like 27 foot by um, 12 foot by 12 by 12 foot, and it's for our parts. All work will be done in the building. We're actually going to put a wash stall inside the building that will have the catch drain in it. Um, it will have a cement board around it, and if we have to, we'll put one outside. But it'll also be in the back of the fence. Um, we don't have a record service. Everything we, we farm that out. They're brought to us by different tow truck companies. Um, cust customers bring us, we do about 30% of our work is by customers. So 70 other percent is by body shops. Um, I think my record stands pretty good. We're, we're pretty clean. We keep a really nice shop. There's no oil, no, no waste. Our spray which is gonna be state of the art. We're buying a brand new one. It's an air system. It's also gonna have a fire system in it. We're buying a new frame machine and we're going to put in an office and put in uh, doors and bathrooms because the place has not really any facilities like this. We're going to recondition the outside of the building also. Um, there'll be no waste, no tires. We don't do mechanic work. There's no oil. It's just mainly pain. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else who would like to speak? 
Public hearing is now closed. Commissioners, I need a motion. I move for conditional use approval with staff recommendations. Any discussion? Yeah, where are the trash cans going to be? The dumpster? Where, where are the dumpsters going to be? I, I believe they're showing it back here at this uh, behind the gate. Is that correct? Look at that red. Actually, the red line is a little bit further over where it's going to be. You see the red square? We're yes. going to come from that part there. You see the circle part? There's a drain there. Um, we're going to use that stall there for the trash can. It will also be covered with the static fence. Um, because we're going to come down to where you see where the yellow lines are at for the parking. Actually, the fence is going to go over and then come all the way back to that red square. The trash can is going to be put there with privacy fence so you can't see it. And it'll only be open when we're putting in the trash, you won't even see it because we go from the, the big building right there at the back, about the ninth stall, there's a slide door in the back there will come out the back of the building to the trash can. The only time the fence will be open is when the trash is being picked up. Right. Uh, trash, trash will be back, back here at this red spot, I think, okay. is, right. but it'll be screened. Be screened. Of it, you said it would be right. You, you said the same yeah. I have a picture of it. So I, I think, uh, let's see, is this, is this what you're, Mr. Richmond? Yeah, it's similar. Um, that is straight up and down. Ours is going to be horizontal um, at an angle. It's uh, actually a tan, almost matching the color of the building. You can't see it. It's, that one there you can actually see through. That's the picture I have here. You can actually see through that one a lot more than ours because ours comes at an angle with the way the chain link fence is made. Yes, and it comes at an angle. And the fence is eight foot tall, not six. Yeah. Um, the fence is already there. We're just going to relocate it. Um, like I say, we, we're proud of our places. You know, um, 36 years, and I've never had a complaint, never fined by the city or the state or anybody like that. OSHA. You know, everything we do, our equipment is going to be brand new. We're going in there. Um, the reason why I'm moving out now is because we have too many crowded. And where I'm at, there's six businesses on one lot. It's, it's not getting it. I need, I, need, I need more parking. And the way this is set up here, it's perfect for us because we've got 18 stalls in the back. We don't overbook cars. We're for quality, <coughs> not quantity. You know, it's, that's my goal is I want every job perfect perfectionist. That's the way I've been in business this long. And I don't advertise. It's all my customers' reviews. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Let's go to item seven. Yes, sir. Item seven is uh, under other business. This is the last item on your agenda. This is a request for an extension to the crossings at Opelika. Uh, this is on McCoy and South or it says South Fox Run, but it's, it's just adjacent to South Fox Run there. Uh, they're requesting a six-month extension to their uh, conditional use approval. Uh, this was originally approved in February 2017, or, or 2018. Uh, it has received uh, some additional uh, extensions over the time. They're requesting for an extension now to August 25th of 2021. Uh, this was originally approved as 216 units. I believe it's now down to 184 units. Uh, so it's been reduced just through the, the development process. I will also let you know uh, this, ha this use has already uh, received a building permit as part of their due diligence. Uh, so they are technically where we would, we would stop the clock, but they are requesting because of the all the additional requirements they have to go through for lending and, and things like that for an additional six month uh, extension. So uh, we do recommend approval of this and happy to answer any questions you may have. Mr. Rice, I believe is here representing this as well. Now, here's the location, again, next to uh, the crossings. And then this is the uh, the latest site plan. So as I've said before, it, it drastically reduced in the number of units uh, over time. 
Mr. Engineer. Chairman, I make the motion to approve uh, the extension. There's no report on the engineering, right? Uh, our, our power services, are you No, telling? sir. I mean, they, they all have uh, okay. no concerns right. with this. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion for an extension of the conditional use approval for six months. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Any extension or uh, abstention? Motion carries. Uh, adjourn. Uh, uh, we need a motion to adjourn. Motion to motion adjourn. To adjourn. All right. And then vote. Huh? You'll need a vote as well. All in favor? Uh, uh, any abstentions? Uh, any opposed? <laughs> any anything? Yeah. yeah, bring it up. We, we're having a couple people with some some issues, so. Uh, we'll try to get it straight down. <laughs>